Yeah, so it is called as a bare area of the stomach. Is, is it clear? Any problem? Okay, now we'll talk about the relations of the stomach. When we talk about the relations of the stomach, we, okay, we've got the anterior relations and the posterior relations. Okay. Now, what are, can anybody tell me the anterior relation of the stomach? Anterior relation of the stomach. So, left, um, left lobe of liver, anterior abdominal wall. So, the student but I have disabled that one now. 64 students join, okay, the baki can you work with that? Okay, so anterior relations may we first of all we start from the abdominal wall. So, we have got the anterior abdominal wall, right? Then this left coastal margin you can see anterior abdominal wall ke baath, left coastal margin and then this left lobe of the liver right okay uske baad, inner aspect of the rib cage inner aspect of these ribs yahan se lower atrium se kaun sa muscle originate kar raha hai of course the diaphragm right so the diaphragm right coastal margin ke baad, we have got the diaphragm which is getting origin from the inner surface of the lower atrium ribs right and is going to form the dome over here so the diaphragm and diaphragm jab yahan pe isko karega and tree is cover karega to it is going to separate its superior diaphragm ke upar kya pada hua ji you see this is a dome of the diaphragm na? right so it the diaphragm is going to separate these you know fundus of the stomach from here ye kya ji left lung and left pleura right theek hai here you can see the pericardium covering the half for here, right? Then the six to ninth ribs, six to ninth ribs, right? And six to ninth ribs key in a surface, a core muscle originate kar raha hai, originate kar raha Oh, sorry, attachment to yamput muscle. Transverses abdominus muscle, right? So the six to ninth ribs, they are going to separate it from the stomach by the, they are separated from stomach by the transverses abdominus muscles. Is it clear? Problem to not So anterior relations, maybe you've got the anterior abdominal wall, left coastal margin, left lobe of the liver, you can see, and then the diaphragm, of course, right? And the diaphragm is going to separate this one from the, you know, left lung and the pleura and pericardium. Over here, you can see the left coastal margin, but we've got six, seventh and ninth, you know, ribs. Or you the muscle attachment, that is a, Transverses abdominis muscle. So these are the anterior relations. Now the structures which are going to form the, which are present on the you know, posterior aspect of the stomach or which are responsible for the, you know. Posterior relation of the stomach. Yeah, okay. And here you, in this picture you can see that we are, we have just re reflected the, you know, stomach from here, okay. And, the, and those structures which are present on the posterior aspect of the stomach, these are also termed as the stomach bed. Okay? For this, for the posterior relations, relation, we use another term that is the stomach bed, where the stomach is resting, right? Where the stomach lies at that, right? So, what will happen then? The stomach is behind the right? Just behind the stomach, what is the stomach? When we're talking about the peritoneum, when we talk about the peritoneum, bursa. Konsa bursa? Okay. Oment. A mental bursa, or it is also called as the lesser sac. Lesser sac, right? Okay. Okay. Ye to chale the space hogi jo uske pichhe thi. Ab uske baad jis structures kons hai ji? Of course, I told you this portion of the diaphragm over here. ठीक है. Then we have got the upper portion of the kidney. Left kidney, and here you can see this yellow structure. This is a left suprarenal gland present over the upper pole of the left kidney. Okay? Then we have got this structure. This is called the pancreas over there. Right? Or pancreas you see this, this tortuous artery running over here. This is the splenic artery, right? And then we have got this 
transverse colon and the transverse mesocolon, right? So the structures which are forming the stomach pad, this is a viva question, right? Name the structures present in the stomach bed. What structures are going to form the stomach bed? Diaphragm here, smaller portion, upper pole of the left kidney, left suprarenal gland. Here you can see this one, pancreas. Then the, this tortuous artery running on the upper border of the pancreas. Pancreas, this is the splenic artery, right? Then this transverse mesocolon, and then the, this one is a transverse colon itself, right? And of course, the nerves and the, you know, uh, lymph nodes, or the vessels and the nerves, which are just going to ramify deeper to the peritoneum over here, right? So all these structures, basically, these are forming the stomach bed, and these are, con these are going to contribute in the Posterior relation system. Is it clear? Ji? Problem to nahi hai Everything is clear, bache? Now we'll talk about the blood supply of the stomach. Well, the mucosa of the stomach, I just told you. The inner surface of the stomach, it is thrown in the force, right? It's a gastric force, here you can see. And this, we use a term for this one that is called the rugi, right? Okay. Now the blood supply. Of the stomach stomach basically beta it is supplied its blood supply is tried by the celiac trunk celiac trunk is a short trunk about 0.5 centimeter right and it arises from the you know abdominal aorta as soon as the abdominal aorta will enter into the abdomen right as you know that the thoracic aorta it passes through the uh, aortic opening in the diaphragm at the level of the kis level be aortic opening hoti hai ji who will tell me aortic opening kis level pe hoti hai t12 t12 right t12 right so as soon as it will enter in the abdominal cavity at the level of t12 this celiac trunk is being given and this is short trunk about 0.5 centimeter. And as soon as it, this trunk will arise, it is again going to split or divide into three terminal, three branches, right? So it is going to give the, you know, left gastric artery, this one, which is going towards the lesser curvature stomach, right? Then it's going to give the splenic artery here. You can see this one running uh, tortuously over the, you know, upper border of the pancreas and going up to the spleen, right? And the third one is the hepatic artery. Tigaji? Right? Hepatic artery. So it's going to be the three branches. Okay. No. So you branching to repeat Garde. Okay. The celiac trunk is going to give the first branch, the left gastric artery. It is going to give the splenic artery. We'll talk about it in detail the, about the blood supply of the GIT or the abdomen. Tigaji? And then this one is a hepatic artery. Third one is a hepatic artery. Okay. Now, fine. So, splenic artery here, you can see when it will reach over uh, at the hilum of the spleen, it is going to give the other branches. It is going to give certain in the pathway while passing with the interior border of the, you know, pancreas, it is going to be the pancreatic multiple branches to the pancreas. Then at the hilum of the spleen is going to give the short gastric arteries, right? And the left gastroepiploic artery. Okay, left gastroepiploic artery, which run along the greater curvature system. Okay, whereas the hepatic artery, it is going to give the right gastric artery. Here you can see right gastric artery. Here, again running in the lesser curvature. Then it is going to give the smaller gastroduodenal artery here, just above this pyloric end. Upper border of pylorus, it is going to give this gastroduodenal artery. And this gastroduodenal artery again is going to divide, give the, you see the right gastroepiploic artery and then the superior pancreatico duodenal artery. Superior pancreatico duodenal artery, right? And then this hepatic artery again is going to divide into the right and the left hepatic arteries, right? I'm going to repeat the branches of the hepatic artery. 
the pituitary artery gave his first punch. Uh, that is the gastrodigital artery here, right? Gastrodigital artery again divided into the two branches: the right gastroepiploic artery and the superior pancreatico duodenal artery, right? Then it is going to be the second branch, the right gastric artery here. And then it is going to give uh, divided into the two terminal branches, that is the right and the left pancreatic artery to the liver. Its name is represented. Right? Okay. Now, as far as the blood supply of the stomach specifically concerned, it we, we find the certain vessels which are running along the lesser curvature and then the greater curvature. Okay? Now, lesser curvature ke saath, jo arteries run karti hai, first of all, we'll talk about the left gastric artery. The first artery which is going to spy the stomach, in this, that is the left gastric artery. But the left gastric artery, I told you that it is getting origin from the celiac tract. And as soon as it will arise, it runs upward, it will run upwards into the left, right? And it will reach the gastric, the lesser curvature. And then it will run in the lesser curvature and it is going to, you know, make end by, make, by making an astomosis with the right gastric artery, which is the branch of the hepatic artery over here. Right? Your problem is not here. Okay? the left gastric artery, when it will reach over here near the lesser curvature, it is going to give the esophageal branches, which is just travel with the lower end of the esophagus and go upwards and going to spy the lower one third of the esophagus also. Right? Problem? Whether right and the left gastric artery make a problem at the portion. Okay, greater curvature ke saath, here you can see the again two arteries, the left gastroepiploic artery, which is the, I told you, when the splenic artery of the tortuous course, which is a hilum of spleen, it is going to give the left gastroepiploic artery. And this left gastroepiploic artery, it will run in the gastrosplenic ligament, okay? and then it will run down along the greater curvature of the stomach, and it ends by making anastomosis with the right gastroepiploic artery, which is the branch of the gastrodudinal artery and gastrodudinal artery is a branch of the Haanji, kiski branch hai? hepatic artery. And hepatic artery is a branch of the selectron. So, bete, when we are going to talk about the arterial supply, kindly you must be remembering the names of the arteries and the their parent arteries. Theke? Right? So you must be knowing that the celiac trunk, celiac trunk key branch, hepatic artery, hepatic artery, when you talk, you see, when I say, I, I will ask the question, that, okay, ji, the, tell me the names of the vessels running along the greater curvature. You say, ji, uh, left gastroepiploic and the right gastroepiploic. Then I can ask, the, the right gastroepiploic artery is a branch of, then you can say that's a branch of the gastrodidin. Then gastrodidin is a branch of Hepatic, hepatic and hepatic is a branch of the selectra. So you must be remembering this tree, right? And you remember one thing that if you know the arterial supply of any organ, especially in the abdominal region, then you can tell it's lymphatic drainage because each of these arteries, in some nodes be put out there of the same name. Hepatic artery ke paas nodes these are here. Yeah, yeah, left gastric artery ke saath jo nodes pane, these are left gastric nodes. Right ke saath nodes, nodes pane, these are the right gastric nodes, right? So you can also, uh, you know, point out the uh, lymphatic drainage also, right? Is it clear? The problem to need. So the, the right, the, uh, along the greater curvature, we have got the left gastric artery, which is basically branch of the splenic artery given at the high level spleen. And then it runs along the greater curvature, and then it is going to be uh, end by making an of the right gastroepiploic artery, right, which is basically given by the hepatic artery, oh, sorry, a gastrodigital artery, and that gastrodigital artery after giving that branch, it will run. This branch will run to the left, right, here along the lower. It passes behind this pylorus, and when it will reach over here, it will pass. Where it, travel, it will travel towards the left along the greater curvature. It ends by making an astomosis with the right gastroepiploic artery. The problem is not And as, as I told you before, that these two vessels they are running in which momentum? In the layers of greater momentum. Okay? Likewise, it is running in the layer of the lesser momentum. Right? 
Okay. Other than these right gastric artery, left gastric artery, right gastropublic artery, and left gastropublic artery, they are the fifth group of the branch nerves, sorry, arteries, which is going to spare this, this fundal area of the stomach. And these are called as the short gastric arteries. And these short gastric arteries, again, these are the branches given by the splenic artery near the hilum of the spleen. And again, they are going to travel to the gastrosplenic uh, ligament, right? And they are going to reach the fundus of the stomach. And, and these are about five to seven in number. Remember this one. Okay, ji. The problem to nahi hai, Sir, wo right gastroepiploic artery ka ek dafa fir bata do. Mere right gastroepiploic artery, it is the branch of the gastroduodenal artery. Okay, and gastroduodenal artery itself is a branch of the hepatic artery, and hepatic artery is a branch of the celiac tract. Now, this right uh, gastroduodenal artery when it will be, you know, getting uh, origin from the, you know, gastrointestinal artery, it will run downwards behind this pyloric end of the stomach. And then it is, it will run to the, run downwards and to the left along the greater curvature. And it makes, and it will travel in the greater momentum. Okay, greater momentum will travel. And it is going to end by making an osmosis with the left gastrocoptic artery. Is it clear, Ji? No problem, to nahi hai, Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Now I'll talk about the venous drainage. Venous drainage, mein, of course, I told you before that all these, you know, uh, arteries, they are accompanied by their respective veins. Hai na? Left gastric artery, saath, left gastric vein, hai, right, ke saath, right gastric vein. Hai. Hai? Okay. And like here, the right and the left gastroepiploic veins are there over here. And short gastric veins are there. Okay. So the named vessels they are having their respective veins along with them. Well, these these uh, ways they are going to drain into the different veins. Accordingly, we'll talk about now that the right and the left gastric vein they are going to open into the portal vein. Okay. You can see this is left gastric vein and the right gastric vein they are coming down over here and they are going to open here. They are going to open into the portal vein. What is the portal vein? Sir, the left gastric vein is the GIT the direct communication to the inferior vena cava. No, the portal vein it is a special venous system. It is a special venous circulation system, basically, which is different for the systemic circulation. Systemic circulation, but venous which carries a deoxygenated blood from the different parts of the body towards the to the towards the liver. heart liver. You know? right atrium through, through the inferior and the superior vena cava. Whereas this portal venous system, it is a special venous system which is going to collect the blood from the your GIT, which contains the absorbed uh, contents or uh, nutrients from the gastrointestinal tract. Okay, and some uh, you know uh, the blood and the blood uh, and certain you know cells or uh, or the products from the you know spleen, right? They are going to enter through to the liver first. Okay, so it's a special system which is going to collect the absorbed nutrient from the gastrointestinal tract and and certain products from the spleen, and then this blood is going to enter into the liver where these nutrients and the, those products, they are consumed for the uh, energy purposes and the other purposes, right? And then the blood from the liver, it is going to enter into the systemic circulation and it will go to the heart. So you see the blood coming from the, the venous blood, basically coming from the spleen and the gastrointestinal tract, it is not going directly into the systemic circulation. It has to go first into the liver, right? And via, and for this purpose, nature has designed this you know, portal system, portal vein, right? So you can see this splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein, they will join with each other and they are going to form the, they are going to form the, this portal vein. And so this portal vein carries which sort of the blood? The, the blood, which is rich in the nutrients, absorbed nutrients from the gastrointestinal system. Is it clear, Bache? Okay. Sir, deoxygenated he over liver se pehle. But it, liver se pehle deoxygenated he over. But it is most, you, it is having them, you know, uh, it is, it's may added over, it's may nutrients are added, right? 
there are certain products of defragmentation from the spleen so your red blood cells districted are out there right so those products they are all they are first carried to the liver aur phir liver in tamam products ko consume karega usme se extract kar lega aur then does this blood, the blood then it is that the, then this blood will enter into systemic circulation through the hepatic veins and then it will go towards the heart is it clear now right so that's why the you know this right gastric vein and the left gastric vein it is going to drain into the portal vein right now the left gastroepiploic vein this one and this short gastric veins they are going to enter into the splenic vein right and the right gastroepiploic vein here this one it is going to enter into the superior mesenteric vein so better as far as the venous drainage of stomach is concerned so we are mostly concerned with these veins that they are specifically are going to drain into the their specific area i told you the right and the left gastric vein they are going to open directly to the hepatic vein sorry uh, uh, hepatic portal vein and then the short gastric veins and the left gastroepiploic is going to enter to the splenic vein and splenic vein again it is responsible for going to uh, for the formation of the portal vein and again the superior mesenteric vein the right gastroepiploic vein it is going to enter into the superior mesenteric so here you can see all the veins which are extracting the you know uh, blood from whole of the you know stomach and then the intestines they are going through the portal vein into the liver is it clear beta no problem to nahi hai any problem till now if you have problem you get me okay so the we will talk about the lymphatic nature i have told you before that the, these lymph nodes which are present around the stomach they are always present along the respective arteries respective arteries now you can see the nodes along the left gastric and right gastric these are all the left gastric nodes and right gastric nodes respectively right and then along the spleen the spleen nodes right and then we have right gastroepiploic and the left gastroepiploic nodes right so ultimately these you know many processes are ultimately kahan se aa rahi hain seal trunk se aa rahi hain theek hai na right gastric artery left gastric artery मतलब इन तमाम का बेसिक सोर्स क्या है वो सीलिक है तो यहां पे सीलिक ट्रंक पास नोड्स हैं दीस आर ऑल सीलिक नोड्स सो जितने भी सारे नोड्स हैं दे आर कलेक्टिंग द लाइन फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ द स्टमक ब्रेड फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द स्टमक अलोंग विद वेसल्स एंड दे गोइंग टू ट्रैवल अल्टीमेटली टू द सीलिक नोड्स इज इट क्लियर की प्रॉब्लम तो नहीं है बच्चों इट्स वेरी सिंपल सो वी विल टॉक अबाउट द नो वी टॉक अबाउट द नर्स आई ऑफ द स्टमक नर्स आई ऑफ द स्टमक इट इज फॉर टू रिफर्स इट इज ड्राइव फ्रॉम द टू सोर्सेस इज सिंथेटिक नर्स प्लाज योर सी दैट्स इट आई एक्सपेक्ट right the sympathetic nerve supply it is basically tried from the ansia this is the nerve supply can able to reach sympathetic nerve supply comes jaati jaldi jaldi door mein mil jaye suplex is hota hai tis tin ka hai final cord se segment one cord se mal lete hain us segment se jo nerve hai wo pehle hai rohit ji on both the world will come they can get a change first that called the is called the sympathetic tube right so the anterior rema or spinal nerve right they are coming out from spinal nerve and then here you can see it will pass through the sympathetic ganglia okay so that means that ganglia the matter so you just press that ganglia and pass it again and from t6 to t9 they are going to form a nerve that called as the greater sympathetic nerve right and from t10 t11 is going there to form the Lesser splenic nerve, and from the T valve, going to the least splenic nerve. So these three splenic nerves, here you can see, these three splenic nerves, they are entering limb the thorax, and they will enter the lumbar pierce the diaphragm, right? And then they will reach here in the region of the sciatic trunk. Right? Here, after that, these are going to lay in the ganglia. Sciatic trunk's part, better. There are sciatic ganglia present, right? Or sciatic ganglia, what are they? Sciatic ganglia, what are they? What about how you define the ganglia? You know what I'm saying? It's a collection of the nerve cells outside the brain. See, yeah? ganglia, nerve cells, ganglia. So then it's a different kind of collection. But I'm not sure. No, or ganglia is a cement bullet or something, right? Then what I'm saying now is a collection of the nerve cells, right, outside the central nervous system, brain. See, so now we have ganglia, right? So these fibers are here, greater, lesser, and the least connected nerves. They are going to enter the ganglia. So now we have to relate them, relate them together. दे आर गोइंग टू द पोस्ट ग्लियर ये जो फाइबर्स आ रही है ये पी ग्लियर नहीं आ रहे हैं बच्चे ठीक है ये भी ग्लियर नहीं आ रहे हैं यहां पे क्या ग्लियर ले करेंगे और दे आर गोइंग टू गिव द पोस्ट ग्लियर और पोस्ट ग्लियर बस वहां से निकलेंगे दे आर गोइंग टू मेक द नेटवर्क हियर 
lacks is over here. And then this lacks is basically contributed to the fiber that coming from this like nerve or passing that fiber coming from this vega I and T and the posterior. You see, this is blue generation. This is representing the anterior vector and this one posterior vector now. Yeah. Right? So these uh, synthetic nerves, they are tied from the straighter lesser and the least lending nerves. Well, Specifically in this silk area, which is the most clear area, T69, these are basically contributed basically by the greater sac. Yeah, you see, the area of the silk plaque is not enough. This major fibers are in front of these, you see, they are contributed by the greater sac. Synthetic fibers. And parasitic fibers are contributed by the, you see here, anterior vector and the posterior vector. Okay, problem is not enough. And here, see, Okay, see. Post ganglion fiber. fiber told you there is the ganglia, tilia ganglia, which is present along the sector. Okay, you get us like this fiber R, na? they are going to retain this ganglia. Yes, they get your power. Okay, from here, right? Or if lax is nerve making a bit, they will travel along the process of the ciliate trunk. Because it is the branch of the left gastric artery. So fiber will travel with the left gastric artery to the to the station. Okay, it's a spinning artery is fiber traveling to the its own station. Is it clear? Okay. So, <coughs> so, <coughs> so, so this is how the nerve, lymphatics, and the vessels they are going to travel together to their destination. Okay, is it clear? Now I'm going to talk about again the sympathetic fibers of the stomach. They are derived from the greatest like nerve, and the greatest like nerve is basically coming from the T6 to T9. Let's come to T6 to T9, passing sympathetic pain, and then they are going to end with the ciliac ganglia. Ciliac ganglia is safe for the ciliac ganglia, and they are going to use the spider stomach with sympathetic fibers. Okay, or its function is it these sympathetic fibers, these are vasomotor fibers. If vessels are trying to travel, they are vasomotor. They control the dummy to the vessels. Also. Number two, these are motor to the Low expensor. Low expensor fiber is the motor which will lead to the you know, uh, constriction of the pelvis. Right? That is the motor function that is, that is at the control of your sympathetic system. Right? And the contact the rest of the stomach will relax. So it is going to the inhibitory fiber to the rest of the stomach. Okay? It is going to give the motor fibers to the pelvis and it is going to give the inhibitory fiber to the stomach. Rest of the, stomach, right? the problem is that and these sympathetic fibers they are they are the pain if you fiber. The pain transmitted fibers they are running along these sympathetic fibers. Is it clear? So it's sympathetic fibers and sympathetic nerve supply of stomach care. It is derived from the greatest lining now, which is going to be in the ciliac ganglia. We ask fiber they rise, they are going to supply the stomach. So stomach make the function there. These are fibers that are important with more fibers. Number two, these are motor to the pelvic sphincter. And number three, these are inhibited to the rest of the stomach musculature. And number four, is may have a pain transmitting fibers. They are going to the sympathetic fibers. Is it clear? The problem is okay. Now, the parasympathetic fibers, the parasympathetic fibers, you can see they are coming by the vagi anterior vagal trunk, which is basically the equosy vagal trunk, right? The anterior vagal trunk is driving the left vagus. The left vagus spike, then it's going to, you know, come on the left, come on the anterior surface vagus, then it will go to the even head, which is in the left vagal trunk, which is going to enter into the, you know, abdomen by passing this is of yellowing, which is inside the anterior surface vagus, right? So, the anterior. So it is so anterior vector is going to spread the anterior sac to the you know stomach and here it's going to give a bigger noise that's called the hepatic branch. Hepatic branch is going to the hepatic branch of course is going towards the ticket and this hepatic branch is going to give this pilot to the pelvis. Okay, we are sympathetic. Okay, parasympathetic function. Very after all, right? Okay. Now the posterior gut, of course, it is responsible for spraying the posterior. You can like posterior for is is for saying or is for opening it is going to learn the posterior spread the stomach. You can see. You push your vector on you, right? You need to spread posterior success of the stomach. You can use a small graphic here. Okay. So, this posterior vector trunk is not only good to spread the posterior success of the trunk, but it will pass through the branches of the sphere of the mesenteric sphere and the sphere of the sphere of the mesenteric plexus. Just show you a little bit. Just show you a little bit. Uh, I have to you know, okay, abdominal rotor here as far as the letter is going to give the ciliac trunk. Because ciliac trunk is going to be another one, it's called spheme is a right? Which is spheme is a it is 
going to supply right the most of the stainless stones up to the transfer column tag the middle to third and the left one to the transfer column okay so i told you okay so here you can see the integral right here okay it's it went towards and uh, well <coughs> can you see this picture? Yes, sir. Okay, you can see this is a sector, right? And below the silicon core here. Another artery coming out from the surface of that is called spume mesenteric artery. Okay, spume mesenteric artery is the is the big thing to the lots of just small sign and then there the large signs come and then the ascending colon he transfers colon. He transfers colon go the about the you know uh you can see the at the junction of you know uh, right through third and the left one third. Yeah, that na. Yeah, so you transfer colon. Yeah, that is the artery. Okay. So obviously spume mesenteric vessel ke saath nerves travel karengi. Okay. Access ki na. Plex around the left is called a plex. My nerve is around the plex around the mental artery called the spume mesenteric plex. So its branches sasa the nerves will travel to the respective areas. Okay. So the spume mesenteric artery will carry up to the right two third, general right two third, and the left one third the transverse vein column. So the transverse vein column, the part of the vagus nerve, it is going to give the sympathetic parasympathetic fascia. Is it clear? The problem is. Yes, that is present that fibrotic travel going through the mesenteric through. They are going to travel, going to supply the whole the small line. Then the cecum here, the ending colon, transfer colon, at the junction of the right two third, the left one third. Here, the transfer colon is called the small mesenteric. Okay. You have an idea that that your your posterior girdle is. The purpose of that was to give posterior girdle. It is going to supply not only the posterior surface, but it is also going to supply the whole of the intestines to the transfer colon, transfer colon. Is it clear? Whereas the left bigger down, uh, sorry, anterior bigger down, it is going to spread the anterior surface first, no? Okay, along with it, it is going to give the hepatic branch the left. This is a uh, you know uh, nerve like uh, difference between the anterior and posterior bigger down. Okay, anterior bigger down, the anterior surface structure much like here, it is giving the large branch to the hepatic uh, to the liver. The hepatic branch and that is also going to give branch worthy the uh, pylorus. Whereas the posterior bigger down, it is going to spread on the posterior surface much. It is also going to spread through the superior bigger down towards the uh, the whole of the nerve spine and the transfer. Is it clear? What is the you? So, parasympathetic nerve supply, which is what? Which is what? Parasympathetic nerve supply, which is 